Why is it so important for the Vatican to destroy the teaching of a pre-trib rapture? Well, if you turn in your Bible to Romans chapter 13, verse 11, it says, And that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Now, a lot of people think, oh, you're saved at the moment of you accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. And that is true. But there's a part of you that's not saved, that's not redeemed. Okay? And that is your flesh, your sinful flesh. You can still sin. You can still mess around. Let me show you that. Ephesians chapter 1. Turn over to Ephesians chapter 1. And I've covered these scriptures in greater detail in my studies, the pre-trib rapture scriptures in all the Pauline epistles. But Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12 says that we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. You see, what's going on here is our salvation begins at the cross and ends at the rapture. That's why Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. Let me show you that verse very quickly. Turn back to the book of John. But you see, our redemption is coming in the future. And I'm going to show you here in a minute why that is so important for the Catholic Church to cover up. John chapter 11. I was thinking John chapter 10 because there's verses over there too. But John chapter 11. Verse 24 says, Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Speaking of Lazarus. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Let me ask you a question. Do you believe what Jesus Christ just said there in John chapter 11? Do you believe that you could actually live to, be, to see his coming, his catching away of the bride of Christ? You see, Jesus is the resurrection. Understand that. Jesus is the rapture. Say, wait a second. Look at the thing. Compare the four gospel accounts of Matthew 24, or excuse me, the three gospel accounts, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21, and show me where dead saints come up. And then compare this passage right here, John 11, to what happens in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 58, and 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 through 18. Read it. Don't just say, well, I saw some fancy movie that Stephen Anderson put out. Read the scriptures for yourself. Think for yourself. Ask the Lord to show you the truth. You see? You say, but, but what's, what's the deal with the Vatican? Think about something. What's the rapture going to accomplish? It's going to be the end of all debates in professing Christianity. Why? The saved are leaving. Did you ever think about that? The saved, truly saved, are going to be going up. There's no more debate. It's over. It isn't, well, Catholic versus Protestant. Hey, the people that are saved are leaving. They're going up. Jesus Christ said so right there. Do you deny Jesus Christ? Believest thou this? You see? That is why the Roman Catholic Church is in high gear right now. Trying to destroy people's faith in a pre-trib rapture. They're trying very, very, very hard. You see, because the rapture is very near. And when it happens, all doubt is removed who the truly saved were. And you're going to find out that it's not the Catholics. The Roman Catholic Church is not Christ's true church. They're a false church. They always have been and they always will be until the Lord Jesus Christ destroys them in Revelation chapter 18. It's very interesting. That's why the post-trib system is so very important to the Roman Catholic Church, to the Vatican, and to her daughters the people that serve the Vatican. That's why this thing is just so very important right now. And if you've been led to believe this, I mean, this post-trib stuff and, and all the pre-trib raptures lie, I see it all the time in the comments. People are just so brainwashed, so mind-controlled. I'm telling you right now, you need to do some study. I have got hundreds of hours 
of teaching and preaching on this subject I've been preaching about since you know my first videos were coming out. When you go way back to 2009, I was preaching on it then. And, uh, you know, it's there. If you want it, it's there. But uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's really been becoming clear to me, you know, how important this thing is going to be um, to cover up. And you see, when the rapture happens, there's going to be literally billions of people that thought that they were leaving, if you include Catholicism and things. There's going to be billions of people, well, they don't believe that they're leaving, but they believe they're Christians. I'll say it that way. Billions of people thought that they were saved and they didn't go. And you see, it's going to be so important that they cover up that dispensational change. Boom. That happens at the rapture. And they say, the gospel's still the same. And they'll be preaching Pauline epistles into the time of Jacob's trouble, telling people that they have eternal security and that you're supposed to provide for your own, First Timothy chapter 5. So therefore, you can take the mark of the beast. It's not going to damn you to hell. And they've already got people where they can change the text whenever they feel like it. Whenever they don't like the text of the King James Bible or whatever new version they use, you just change it. Go to Greek or to Hebrew or whatever you need to do, Aramaic or, you know, all this nonsense. Just change the, the, the text. You see, I mean, it just, this thing is so amazing to me. I, you know, I, I just, I, I will preach on other subjects, but it's, it's going to come back to the rapture thing over and over and over again. Why? Because we're that close. We're very, very close. And you see, when the rapture happens, and those of us that are saved, we leave, the Vatican and her little daughters are going to have to cover it up as quickly as possible. And I don't believe that they're going to be totally successful. Why? There's a great multitude that comes out of that time period coming. Revelation chapter 7 talks about that. So, it's it, it just becomes clearer and clearer to me all the time uh, why, the, you know, I said in the last video about how that, you know, back in 2009, I could barely find any videos at all um, attacking the pre trib rapture. And now all of a sudden it's just like there's more videos out there attacking the rapture than anything, um, you know, in terms of a lot of the other big stands that, that there's debate on within uh, professing Christianity. And it's just incredible. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's really something. Um, we're getting close, brethren. And uh, I, have, I have no idea. I mean, it, it could still be a couple years. You know, I don't know. Uh, I think it's going to be in our lifetime, definitely. Um, because of the rebirth of the nation of Israel uh, definitely puts us in that time period and of course you know you look at the signs that are mentioned for the end times and it's just like they're all happening <laughs> so it's co it's coming soon we're going to be leaving but uh, these people that are pushing this post-trib system I mean again I used to say well you know I don't think it's a salvation issue I don't believe that way anymore I do believe it is a salvation issue um, somebody that's brand new saved and doesn't know any better and they've fallen for this false teaching of this post-trib stuff I'm not going to be real rough on them but the ones that are teaching the post-trib system nope I don't believe that they're saved I don't believe for one minute that they're saved uh, when you when you actually look at the arguments and you actually read through the Pauline epistles and you look at scriptures that prove that we're leaving beforehand um, it's so crystal clear and uh, it's tied directly to our salvation you know I mean uh, this there's there's so many arguments against this whole thing of the Christians going into the time of Jacob's trouble uh, just way too many arguments to ignore and if, if you're saying well I just wish you'd get off the preacher rapture thing hey unsubscribe okay the little button down there you know underneath the window to the what is it I guess the bottom right corner or something like that it says you know subscribe or unsubscribe click the unsubscribe button okay Go watch some porn or some, you know, dirty movies or whatever you'll feel like watching if you're a lost person. All right? If you're saved, I'm going to tell you something. Um, when you see the finish line coming up and you're running a marathon, you get that second wind. You run harder. And that's what I'm imploring all of my brothers and sisters in Christ to do. I'm not putting a guilt, guilt trip on you. You know, where are the souls that you've led to the Lord? You need to this and you... No, 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 no. I've never been about pressuring people. Uh, you're, if you're not doing this, you're not right with God. If you're not, you know, da, 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 you know saying all this, this soul winning, soul winning, soul winning and whatever. 
Um, so winning is important. I'm not trying to downplay it. But what I'm saying is don't start to get away from the Bible here in the last little stretch of the race. Um, you know, do what you can to clean up your life. Um, don't get discouraged with, with the world, the way that things are going. And th it's, it's vexing. I know it's vexing. Believe me. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're getting close to the end. So um, hold fast. Uh, be not weary in well-doing. Well, those are all admonitions in Scripture. And uh, don't let anybody deceive you into this whole post-trib thing. It is just a lie from Satan. Uh, it's disgusting. So the body of Christ is going to be leaving before this time of Jacob's trouble. And if you're saved, you're going up. Uh, again, don't fall for this uh, kind of Pentecostal type of a deal where the uh, saved that are carnal will be staying and the saved that are good are going to be going. <laughs> That's nonsense. Okay, no scripture for that. They twist all kinds of scriptures trying to prove it. Um, nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Uh, if you're saved, if you're part of the body of Christ, you know, the Lord's not going to have a, a, you know, half the body comes up and the other, the legs and the, you know, waste stays on the earth or something. What's the purpose of the judgment seat of Christ, you know? I mean, if all the good Christians go up and get judged, well, why bother judging all the good Christians? You know that they're going to get good rewards or something. It's, it's ridiculous. Our works are going to be judged at and tried by fire at the judgment seat of Christ when we go up, all right? If you're a carnal Christian, truly saved, well, you're going to see your life work burned up at the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, you're going to suffer loss, as the Bible talks about. But um, you're not going to be, you know, burned up yourself or something like this. You're not going to go through purgatory. <laughs> so, just wanted to make a quick video here. Uh, just kind of going over th some more scriptures. Um, going to be bringing out some really interesting stuff too. The Lord's been really um, kind of placing some interesting little messages in, in my mind. and So, have some interesting things coming up. Um, I think that's all I'm going to say for now because I have, this is uh, Wednesday night I'm just doing a couple videos real quickly here hopefully I can get these up um, quick online and uh, tomorrow I'm going to be doing some more videos so I had some errands to run and things today but uh, tomorrow I'm going to be getting back to it um, I just want to thank everybody too for praying the, the spiritual warfare it was about I think five days this time of just it was bad. I mean, it was, it was really, 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 really bad. Um, weird dreams and just, you know, I mean, I, I don't know what what goes on sometimes. I mean, it's just like uncontrollable rock music entering my brain. Um, I'm praying like crazy and and just can't sleep at night and and it just uh, sickness, really, really weird sickness, and it was it was a it was one of the worst attacks ever. Uh, even our son, even Oliver was feeling some things and, and um, really kind of fussing and things like that. My wife was feeling it. It, it, was, it was a bad attack this past time. So if you prayed, uh, thank you very much. Um, we got through it. We're back to our weird selves again. You know, <laughs> so um, the Lord's good. He's real good. Uh, I just want to encourage you with that, brethren. I mean, you know, my wife and I, we put ourselves on the front line of the battle and uh, we get attacked quite a bit. As you can see from the comments, as you can see from all the videos coming out attacking us. Um, but God can get you through it. Um, whatever you're going through, uh, it's only for a moment. It's only for a little bit. Uh, I can tell you that there were things in my life that I thought I would never get through. I thought, well, this is the end of me. This is going to be it. You know, this bad situation, I just don't... I can't imagine getting through this. I've, I've gone through really, really, really heavy depression at times. And uh, you get through it. And uh, the Lord will restore your joy. He'll, he'll just uh, turn your sorrow into laughter and your, and your mourning into joy. And just, oh, it's such a blessed life sometimes. And we just have so much fun um, just serving the Lord. And uh, you out there, you're part of it. Um, we get a lot of, we, we draw a lot of that encouragement from your comments and things and, and letters in the mail and things like that. Uh, my wife loves to get letters, handwritten letters in the mail um, addressed to me or to King James Video Ministries because the postal system's here a little 
kooky, so don't put it in her name if you want to write to her. But um, that's a great encouragement to us uh, when we when we see that lives have changed and things, and, and you're praying for us. We really, really are encouraged by that. I uh, just want to make a quick little note of that, too. Thank you to everybody that does that and uh, that helps support the ministry and things, too. We really, really, really appreciate it. And um, according to the will of the Lord, we will continue. And, um, and I'm never going to say, well, I'm always going to be here. I don't know what God's mind is and, and uh, what the Lord could allow to happen and whatever else. But uh, as long as you got your King James Bible and the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth, you'll do all right. We'll do all right. But uh, the this time that you're going through, I know a lot of you go through depression, and I just want to, the Lord's really placed this on my heart just to make a quick mention of this, and that is the depression that you're going through, it's but for a moment. I mean, we go up. We're up there for the time of Jacob's trouble. We're up in heaven, judgment seat of Christ, which might be a little bit scary, but, you know, we'll get through it. And uh, if you've done things for the Lord, and I do have a, a sermon, by the way, on that. I just had, actually had a sister ask about it. If you go to my channel and type in, in the search area, type in Judgment Seat of Christ, and it'll come up. It's a two-part teaching. It's over two hours in length, and uh, I get into it's very detailed study on the Judgment Seat of Christ, all the different crowns that are given, why they're given, how you get them, things like that. Um, it's an important study, one of the most important I ever did. So listen to that. But uh, we go up. We meet the Lord. We meet each other. Talk about a good party we're going to have up there. Just, you know, having a great time and uh, seeing each other for the first time face to face. And uh, not like, oh, you know, I've got to get back to work here. Got to get back to the house. Nope. We're going to be with each other. Incorruptible bodies. Our salvation is complete. You know, wonderful. Judgment seat of Christ. We're up there. We're not going through the hell on earth down here in the time of Jacob's trouble. And then we get on horseback. Marriage of the Lamb, excuse me, then we get on horseback, come back down, Battle of Armageddon, we watch the Lord wipe out the 200 million man army of the Antichrist and the false prophet, sends them down to hell before he does that. We come down, go out, gather the nations to the judgment of the nations, Matthew chapter 25. That's where you have the wheat and the tares being separated, by the way. That's what the parable is about in the book of Matthew. The sheep go into the millennial kingdom. The tares, the goats, go down to hell, prepared for the devil and his angels. Satan is bound and put in the bottomless pit. We have the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then we go into the millennial kingdom. A thousand years ruling and reigning with Christ on this earth. At the end of the thousand years, Satan is loosed for a little bit, and he goes out to deceive the nations. They come against Jerusalem. Fire comes down from heaven, devours them. Then we have the great white throne judgment. Then eternity. Some people try to make some other things in there and stuff, and... I don't get into some of that stuff, but the point is, you know, eternity. That's your future, Christian. You know, it's kind of like I uh, had a splinter in my hand earlier, right there. Don't really know how I got it, but I uh, was at a place getting some wood today, so that was probably it. But uh, you know what? That splinter was in there deep, and I had to take a needle, and I had to get in there and dig that thing and dig that thing, and it was like, okay, it's starting to hurt a little bit now because I'm really getting deep in there. <laughs> But you know what? It doesn't hurt anymore. The pain's over. That suffering that I had there is just a little bit. A little bit of time. And now it's gone and it feels better. The suffering that you're going through right now in this life, the suffering that you have, you uh, saved women out there that have lost husbands, you teenagers that have lost parents, lost siblings, you uh, men that have lost wives, um, whatever your situation is, I know that you're suffering out there as Christians. And uh, you got that splinter in your hand right now. And it's painful. But you know something? That time is coming when uh, the Lord's going to take care of all that stuff. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Romans chapter 11 talks about that. Uh, no, sorry, Romans 13 verse 11, I think. Talked about that in the last video. Don't want to misquote the scripture here. Don't I, you know? I have a lot of scriptures memorized, but that one is not one of the more familiar ones that I have memorized. Yeah, Romans thirteen eleven. So, going to be doing some more videos tomorrow. I'm going to 
quit yapping for now, but, but uh, just please be encouraged, brethren. Uh, thank you for praying for us. We got through the really hard time. Um, I, again, I it just I want to make a little comment here to answer. Somebody posted this on my ministry website, and they said that uh, you know I wouldn't pray at the end of the the sermon that I did here on you know why can't lost people understand the Bible? I wouldn't pray for people, but I asked if you could pray for me. Um, I I wish people would you know get into the ministry for themselves sometime and see how it works. Uh, I was very close to passing out. To be honest, I was very, very, very sick at the end of that sermon. I was literally fighting to just stand straight, you know, straight. I mean, I, it was literally like I got done with the video and I was like, and I just had to hold on to the table for a little bit. I was, I was violently ill. Um, I wasn't even acting like myself and, and Lord got me through that one, believe me. So that's going to be it. I just, you know, really been, you know, just. Lord's been doing some great stuff in our lives and really, really, really shown us some amazing things. Some really amazing stuff is going to be coming out in the future. Uh, some big studies. Um, I'm just going to keep yapping here all night, I think. But uh, yeah. one other thing, and that is I had a, a brother, dear brother from Australia. You know who you are. Um, and uh, he said the one time, made a comment about how that he used to like to listen to Dr. Ruckman's big, big studies. You know, he'd do like um, 12 cassette tapes or something like this. You know, I don't even know how many hours that would be. But it's quite a few hours, you know, 16, 20 hour studies on a subject. Very, very thorough, very detailed. Well, we're coming out with one in the future. And uh, spiritually speaking, it is going to be a Moab. I'll say it that way if you know military terminology. Um, it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a real big one. So, uh, and it's going to be many, many, many videos long. Um, it's going to be a doozy. So I'm not going to say anything more on that, but, uh, cause it'll be coming out. Not sure when there's still a lot of research to do, still a lot of videos again tomorrow. I'm going to be recording one of them. So, uh, some really amazing stuff. That's why we really need your prayers. Um, please, please, please keep us in your prayers. Very, very important. I mean, we are on the battlefront here, and we get hit hard sometimes. So don't just say, yeah, brother, I'll pray for you, and then, you know, do it once and then forget about it. I mean, we need daily prayer. And so I'm going to stop now, or else I'm just going to keep talking, and it'll be tomorrow before long. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.